So this uh, recording is going to be about actually implementing time series forecasting in R. To do this, we're going to utilize um, some files. So on LMS, you should zoom down to where it says demand forecasting. Click here, and then there is a folder that says files um, uh, for forecasting. And you can see there are three such files. There's an R file, which we'll use. Um, there's a, two CSV files, a King's and a New York births um, file. So please download these, save them somewhere, and keep track of where you save them. Um, and then open up this uh, file, OK? Um, so please do that and open it up in our uh, studio. So I have already done that. I have uh, gone to file, open, and you know I have wherever um, your file is. And here is forecastkingsexample.r. So this is the file that is posted on LMS. And so if we um, get started, a couple things. Um, if you're kind of new to R, I would really strongly encourage you to watch some other videos about getting started with R, as well as utilize our course resources, specifically our TA, um, to help. Uh, so first step, let's just read in a file. So this kings file, uh, kings.csv, is the other file that we're going to use today. Um, and so a couple things, if you look um, at this, if you see in line, um, my line eight here, this is where my files are saved, okay? So if I go to this place, um, this is where my files are. Obviously your computer, it'll have a different location. So you can go and find wherever that is. Let's say, you know, it's, it's here and you can basically go and get that location and you can copy wherever, you know, that is, right? Um, but if I paste that in, um, what I want to notice is when you paste that in, uh, the backslash are in the wrong way. So you basically need to paste in um, inside of here wherever your files are. But when you do that, you need to then update, you know, so that they're not, they're the correct direction, right? Um, so in some ways like this. Um, so as you do that um, and paste that in wherever your location is, um, this basically just goes and says, okay, I'm going to now go read a CSV file that's in this location and then finds kings.csv. Um, and it's a CSV file, so it's separated um, here. Um, and then it has skip to and some other you know, encoding information. Um, if I run this, um, click run, um, all of a sudden you should see over here now you have a King's uh, data file. Um, the other thing I did is I, um, we're going to use two libraries, library TTR and library forecast. Um, if you haven't already, or if it's not set up, you can install these packages. Um, if you haven't already, you can just uh, do install.package TTR. Uh, run um, and then it'll you know run that if you haven't already done that. Okay, so I'm going to comment um, that out because I've already had that. Um, so a couple things. Okay, so we have now read in this file. If you look over here, I now have this file. It is worthwhile looking at what is in this file. So I can um, click here. Um, and if I double click on it, you can see Kings. It has you know basically. Uh, some pieces of data that start at 60 and it goes to 56. There's 42 pieces of data. Um, and you can see here, if I want to look at it so it's not over in kind of that, if I run it, that outputs this as well. Okay. Um, it does have a header um, on it as well. Um, and so hopefully that's what you want. So you should always look and make sure that the data you actually have. Uh, read in is the correct data that you want. And so you, it would be useful um, to go and check out, is that really what's in the data set um, that you have? Um, so if we did that, we went and looked at um, what is actually in this. Um, and um, I will open it. I opened the CSV with an Excel file. You can see that, okay, cool. Yeah, the first piece of data is 60 and it goes to 56. 
And why am I um, not getting this stuff is because of the function here that says skip to. So I skipped the first two lines of my CSV. So it basically ignored these two and it started here. You'll notice it doesn't also have the X, um, like it just has one piece of data. Um, so everything is cool. I know I may be spending some time on that, but it is worthwhile to make sure you're actually reading in the right information. Um, so we're good to go there. So we've now read in our data. Um, and for uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to use time series forecasts. And so we need to put this data, this Kings into a time series. So this is a data structure. TS is a data st structure. That's a time series. Remember a time series is a fancy name for on the X axis, we have time uh, and the Y axis, whatever data we want. Okay, so by this line, if I run that, it can see here now I actually have um, King's time series. It's just a time series with King's. Um, you can see over here, we now have this data set. It's from one to 42. Um, and I'm just gonna print it out um, by running this here. And you can see uh, just again to check, um, it's now a time series. It starts on one, ends in 42. The frequency is one, meaning it repeats every one period. Um, and all it did was it basically added an X axis to our data. Just to check again, we have 60, it ends at 56. Okay, cool, everything got read in properly. Um, let's now, you know, a uh, reminder to time series forecast, the first step is to plot the data and identify the components in um, our data set. So I'm gonna use plot.ts. Um, and then I'm just gonna plot whatever I called this, which is here. And then just to make it a little bit easier to see, I'm gonna make it have these O's. And so now you can see over here, we have uh, our plotted data. So on the X axis is just from period one to 42. And then on the Y axis, it has the age of death of our Kings of England. Um, and if we look at this, our first step um, is to plot the data and then uh, see what systematic components are in our data set. If we look at this, you can see it doesn't really look like any repeatable um, situation, like every so many periods it repeats. It also doesn't look like there's too much of a trend. Um, and so I would say this is a stationary data set that the only systematic component is level. So uh, we've learned a couple different ways um, to forecast a stationary um, data set. The first one is just a simple um, moving average. And so let's let's forecast uh, periods beyond, you know, period 42. Let's forecast in the future um, that, okay? And so to do that, we're gonna use something called SMA. And so maybe you don't know what SMA is. So I'm gonna go in the console and I'm gonna go question mark SMA and I'm gonna hit enter. And by doing that, that brings up uh, this SMA and you can see it's part of the TTR package. So if you haven't, you get an error um, later when you're running something, make sure that you have the library TTR on there. Um, and so the description is it calculates various moving average of a series and we're gonna use SMA where it says we need X and then we need to say N equals something. Um, and so if we go down, X is basically our time series and N is the number of periods to average over. Um, so if we want a two period, five period, a hundred period, that's what N um, is. So we need to tell it to set that. Um, and if we go down, there's you know multiple other things in this, but it says SMA calculates the rhythmic mean of the series over the past N observations. Okay, so given it's the past N observations, what SMA gives us is L of T. And so I wanna emphasize that um, SMA does not give us the forecast, it gives us L of T. Um, and where does that come from? As a reminder from uh, the equations, um, if we look at our slides from before, um, what that is doing is it's giving us the last N pieces. And so we're getting L of T. If we want our forecast, remember there's a relationship between L of T and F of T. So again, uh, the biggest thing here is what's coming out is L of T, not F of T. Okay, so great. So basically it says, if we look here, we need to give it our time series and then say how many periods. So let's do three. Let's do a three period moving average. Um, so I'm just gonna call that uh, King's time series SMA3. You can call it whatever you want. 
And we're just going to use SMA3 King's time series. Again, that's what we already made into a time series data up here. And then N of three means we're going to do a three period moving average. So if I run that, um, OK, so now you can see up here, we also have this piece of data. Um, and I'm just going to print it out to see what's going on. So as you can see on the bottom here, we now have um, another time series. So what we have of the LTs, you can think of LTs as another time series. It's just a smooth version of that. It starts in period one, um, goes to 42, and its frequency is one, so similar. But you notice here the first two are NA, not available. Why is that? Again, going back to our L of T equation, we do not have three pieces of data uh, to calculate L of one, right? So if I wanted L of one, I don't have enough in the background. I need three pieces of data before I can calculate a three period um, in the last three periods, right? So that's why you get two N of A's here. So the first L of T I can calculate um, is in period three. And you could go back to the data and kind of make sure it's doing what you're wanting. How did it get 56.667? It took basically um, our king in period one, two, and three, and took the average of those. And you can see it goes on um, up until period 42. Okay, so we basically have a um, uh, L of T from three to 42. Okay, why can we not calculate in period 43? Because we don't have D of T in period 43. Um, so that gives us again L of T. Now the question is, what is the forecast for period 43? Um, and so we could, if we wanted to try, we could say, well, give me the value um for period 43 okay and what is going to happen if i do this what's going to happen is you're going to get an error not available why because again we um don't have anything in here it only goes to periods 42. so remember the key thing is um you is that the forecast in period t plus n is equal to l of t so if i want the forecast in period 43 I need L of 42. So this will give us then my forecast um, for period um, 43, which is 67.667, okay? Um, what if I asked you for the forecast for period 100? What would be the answer to that? Well, the answer to that would be still uh, whatever was the last one we could, L of T, uh, and then it's still 67.667. This is because, um, remember, um, f of t is equal to l of t minus n. So no matter how much into the future, you get the same because it's a stationary um, forecast. But so now you have implemented a time series forecast uh, smoothing average using R.